It's Bourbonite. It's a three bottle review. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. Uh, give us a second to get into these, but today we are reviewing the Blue Note Juke Joint Bourbon, the Blue Note Crossroads, and the Blue Note Rye Whiskey. <laughs> Our plates full today, but I am very excited, especially about this crossroads because it's a toasted French oak. It's not just a toasted, it's and not it's just not a just French a French oak. oak finish. It's a toasted French oak finish, and I love both those things. So we'll see. All right, let's start off with the Blue Note Juke Joint Bourbon. Mm -hmm. uh, this is 93 proof, and it is Kentucky distilled and sourced, but aged in Memphis, Tennessee. Right, yeah, uh, undisclosed though they work with Green River, so there For is uh, a good chance that this is Green River. Possibly, but, yeah, still... three to four years old. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 70% corn, 21% rye, and 9% malted barley. 30 bucks. About 30 bucks, which yeah. is, you know, mm -hmm. good for new newer comers. We like to see some lower price points. I get some Sweet. citrus floral. There's some sweetness. Sweetness, yeah. honey, herbal notes on the nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little light honey, citrus as you said. Yeah, pretty, All right. pretty light nose. Light, a mm -hmm. little bit of sweetness, very approachable, mellow. Getting a little touch of spice from that 21% rye as it settles in. Yeah, I was gonna say, but there is some earthiness there mm -hmm. um, showing up in that at that 93 proof and it does give you enough heat you know mm -hmm. lets you know it's there it doesn't it's not falling completely flat or anything it's not watery you know we're not looking to speculate but it does kind of remind me of how when we first tried green river bourbon mm -hmm. uh the rye bourbon how i was saying that it had a lot more earthiness to it than i thought it's 90 proof presented so yeah. if it is that you know i do think sense. that it is still packing some pretty significant layers of flavor for being 93 proof for having, you know, however much water added to it. Mm -hmm. um, it is unfiltered yeah. and we love that. And I think you can tell texturally that, mm -hmm. you know, we still got all of our fatty acids and stuff. Yeah, there. not a super long finish. Uh, probably, you know, about what you would expect, you would for, expect a for a 93 proofer. But, I would say uh, even a little better than you would expect for a 93. Yeah, possibly. I, I still think the, the earthiness is, is much more than what I would attribute to a 93 mm. proofer, but. I think it's a solid place yeah. to start for like a flagship bourbon mm -hmm. at 30 bucks. And I'm, I'm fine our, with it. Do our second sip here. Well, I've already done that. This is my third. Very easy, I think, mm -hmm. for someone who wants something that may be appealing to the masses. Well, speaking of appealing, I get a little bit of uh, some type of peel in there. I was trying to think if it's orange or if it's kind of lemon or maybe like a little hybrid of mm. the, but I definitely get like some, get a lemon. some peel in mm -hmm. this. And black pepper? Is that mm -hmm. what you're getting on the on, as the spice? A little bit, yeah. A little bit mm -hmm. of pepper towards the finish. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, for thirty bucks, I think it's. Uh, I'm, I'm. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. Um, I would. Solid. I would recommend that if someone said, "Hey, what's something that's thirty dollars or under mm -hmm. for someone who's just getting into things?" Mm -hmm. You know, I think this is a good one. That's not just one of the big boys, right? Yeah, for sure. And if you're wondering why we're doing these three and not like the uncut, oh. which you know, two proof ounce would like, would like it's because we're reviewing the ones that are more readily and widely distributed. The uncut is more of a uh, limited release. Yeah. So. All right. Next one is the one I'm the most excited about. This is the Crossroads. Okay, so this is the same mash bill as the bourbon, uh, but this is 100 proof, non age stated, but finished, as we said before, in those toasted French oak barrels. So right. not just toasted, yeah. not just French oak. Now this is one where they do disclose where they source from, and it is Green River. Mm, so okay. there we go. And with that higher proof, with that finishing mm. element, I would expect this to be more than just $10 more than the, the the proof bump and the then bump the and the finishing secondary barrel which is an expense right but it's 40 bucks um colors which i think is pretty significant statement today when most people are charging a lot more because those secondary barrels are expensive they are uh, so i'm very excited about this one oh you can smell that mm. toastiness more complexity in the oh, nose, nose. Yep. yeah maybe i'm thinking of you know toasting things around a fire but almost a little marshmallow See, I'm getting like, you know, when they smoke a cocktail, uh, like an old smoked old fashioned at a bar or something in that they open the door, the, lift the thing up and all the smoke goes. And I get that, those toasted wood chips with vanilla, almost, which I think is that French oak, that French vanilla. Yeah, almost oak. the little uh, sprig of um, evergreen that, you know, they the sometimes- rosemary? rosemary? I don't know. That's they, pretty, oof, those I don't are know. I don't I'm like it when the they do that at bars. Okay. The <laughs> but yeah, it's not overpowering like when yeah. they do it at a bar, but yeah, pretty great nose. All right. All right, see you health. 
Definitely the toasty. Definitely. Yeah, picking up the toast on the barrel there. Goes slightly drier towards the finish than the first one, but again, I think that's that additional barrel, mm -hmm. you know, and that those tannins and things making it a little dry. I'm wanting to reach for my water. Mm. Um, I'll take a second sip here in a second. But and the French, yeah, sort of a French, French vanilla. Oak, French mm -hmm. vanilla, yeah. For sure. I like how it takes the sweetness that we encountered with the Juke Joy bourbon and that toasty oak French vanilla thing is kind of mm -hmm. balancing it out. Um, and it's even on the finish, maybe elevating the pepper a little bit. I kind of want to want to let it sit here for let's a second. Say, let's so let's while we wait, we want to tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get uh, the t-shirt that I'm wearing, hat, the Glen Cairns that we're drinking from. In fact, all of our glassware, including our water glasses, rocks glasses, copitas, uh, challenge coins, the new Glen Cairn pen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, bottle cut candles, our new elemental elixir cocktail syrup, and more. That's always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And join all these fine fellows down here. All these fine folks, look at them go, uh, who, you know, contribute every month uh, yes. to see barrel picks exclusively for them. They get discounts on that merch depending mm -hmm. on their tier. Uh, another round, which are after the episode exclusives, just for them and more. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, I'm gonna let it sit here. Also kind of let our palate recover a little bit and we'll be right back. And we're back, thanks for sticking around. Okay, continuing here with the crossroads. You still get that fruity floral thing that we were talking about on the juke joint bourbon on the nose here, but paired with that French oak. Graham crackerness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more that we sit with this one, the more I'm really liking this expression. I think that this is a great one for anyone who's curious about finishes, but maybe a little reluctant and like not really sure about wine finishes. You just want to explore more. If you like oak too, and you want to kind of explore something that's not going to break the bank because a lot of secondary finished products are, we see them priced very high. Mm -hmm. I think that this is a great uh, intro into deciding what finishes you like, if you like finishes at all. And this would honestly, this would make a great old fashioned. I yeah, could make, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, this yeah. would be really good in a cocktail too, especially at that hundred proof. And mm -hmm. it's not going to break the bank. Yeah, true, 40 bucks, mm. yeah. Okay, yeah, I I like. I recommend this one as well. I want one for my cocktails. I would put this in an espresso martini hmm. or any kind of smoked old fashioned. I think this smoked would be perfect, old fashioned, yeah, for sure. perfect for that. Yeah, okay. We got one more to go, but now we're switching to a rye whiskey. All right, the rye whiskey, we're looking at a 95.5. That means 95% rye, 5% malted barley. Uh, it is at least three years old. Again, we're back to the undisclosed Kentucky distillery, but 35 bucks. 35 bucks, 93 right proof here. as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. a rye on the note. Definitely that, a rye. That's a rye. That's um, a 95.5. Herbal garden, or yeah, herb garden. Mm -hmm. Maybe some dill. Eucalyptus. Yeah, and very much a little mint. Pine needles and yeah. I love that smell. It just reminds yeah, me of nice. springtime, summertime. Yeah. So nice. All right. An Irish spring. Okay. That's a soap. <laughs> I like the texture, also mm -hmm. unfiltered on this one. Yep. And it keeps all those basically fresh herb garden, spice, minty, rye notes, but it, without being super overbearing with it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what scares a lot of people off from rye, and I think that's because the proof they brought it down to ninety three. Right. So it's a digestible amount of that yeah. of that uh, mm -hmm. those flavors. Yeah. Also, like the first sip of the Crossroads, um, maybe a little dry. I think it's it's mm. just the, the high rye element of this, but I think. The second and subsequent sips will kind of alleviate that. I'll find out. Let's right find now. out right now. See, I also think this would be good in a summer cocktail or a mm. spring cocktail, mm. especially that you know, with that herbal element, if it has any sort of fruit or herbal element in the cocktail, I think it's really going to sing. Ninety-three proof. I would still put that in a cocktail. I mean, mm -hmm. anything between ninety and hundred is usually my yeah my go-to. Yeah, this is the classic, you know, rye notes, everything that we listed so far, but I'm also getting a citrus sort of lemon mm -hmm. element in here as well. And I think that's what makes us think so much of like spring, yeah. which is great because it just turned spring. It did. Right? At uh, the time of the filming of this episode. Filming of this episode, yeah, for sure. So yeah, I'm, I'm picturing myself sitting outside with this in a very spring-like mm. cocktail. I think we've kind of echoed the, if I'm correct, the lemon note of that citrus pop in from the bourbon mm -hmm. not so much jumping out in the uh, crossroads with the right. finish but that is something that i have said about like green river and like bardstown bourbon company origin series distillate before that there's this like springtime lemon they're owned by the same company tea. if you yeah, guys if didn't you don't get that now they don't all make the same stuff right. but eh. different stills different yeah. similar hands in the same stuff i don't know it's just 
I just find that interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Much like how, you know, Buffalo Trace and Barton are owned by Sazerac, but in no way are they like the same stills, the same right. mash bills, the same yeast strains, but there is, oddly enough, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes a, a, a three line. Yeah, that's or kinda, Brown Foreman. Kind of, well, yeah, what we, yeah, exactly. What we get with Green River and Barstown Bourbon Company being mm -hmm. owned by the same company. Yeah. Um, 35 bucks, would definitely use this in a cocktail. I would definitely use this in a cocktail. Would would drink this um, neat, neat as, with a cube. as well. Yeah, for sure. Small, a big cube. This is one of those rides where I think you could drink it in hotter months as well. This Maybe is a springtime. So with a cube, though. I think, like, if I was going to have, like, a garden party or something and I was going to serve a rye, I think it would be this one. Because it's um, so, like, refreshing and crisp. It's so crisp and refreshing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially with, you know, this in a highball, mm -hmm. like, with, um, you know, a fresh garnish mm -hmm. from the garden. I'm, I'm really getting into gardening right now. I just think that would be great. I think it would yeah. be a great cocktail. I also recommend, recommend this I mean, one, I gotta so. give it all around price point, quality. I mean, yeah, 30, 35, 40 is what we've, you know, reviewed in this episode. So from 30 to 40 bucks, um, quality products. That's what the people want. That's what the people it's want. That's what the people want. Give it's them what, what we they want. want. We what want we it. want to, we're part of the people. Uh, so that's always great to see. Yeah. There we go. Hey folks, if you haven't subscribed already, you know what you can do? You can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here. Hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more bourbon and rye.